Hi there, in this one we're going to talk about the Q file dialog. It's basically just a file browser that you can open from within your tool. I've made a few small modifications here to our Unreal Demo UI file. Changed the label on this button to Open Files and the object name to BTN Open Files. And in the code, I have created a reference here called self.btn open files, which refers to that new object. And I have created a new event here called Open Files that we are connecting to the button click. So what we're gonna do is take a very quick look here at the documentation. There's a bunch of functions and then some signals and then some static functions. So the easiest way to use this is just to use a static function. And you can see after all the static functions, there's gonna be a list of arguments. So we'll just be using get open file names initially. So it's gonna take a parent object, a caption, directory to start our search in and then some filter information and some of the stuff is optional. So we can take a look at an example if we scroll down just a little bit further right here. So we're gonna, in this case, this is just doing the get open file name, which is gonna limit you to a single option. If you use get open file names, then you can choose multiple options. But uh, what we see is we've got a reference to self here. That's gonna be our parent. And then we've got the label or caption. And then the search directory that we're gonna begin with. And then some filters determining what kind of files we can pick from. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna grab this whole thing as is, and then copy it down here. And we can fit this all in one line, I think. So this TR here, I believe that means translate. It's not necessary. I'm gonna get rid of it just to avoid confusion. And I've got a directory that I've already laid out there. So I'm gonna replace that with dir. So what it's going to do is it's going to complain because it doesn't know where Q file dialog is defined. And if you look over here, you can see that it inherits from Qt widgets. So PySide 2qt widgetsq file dialog. And we have Qt widgets being imported up here. So we have an address to Qt widgets. So we basically just have to make sure that we include uh, Qt widgets dot in front of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at Unreal. Just going to reload it. So when I click on this, it's going to open a file dialog. And uh, in this folder, I'll go ahead and show you what's in here. There are, there's one FBX and then some JPEGs, some pings and some targets here. So that's what it is selecting for. And you can see we've got some PNGs and some JPEGs, but no targas. And the reason for that is I have, as the default filter here, uh, we don't have TG as an option. So if I decide I want that in there, I can add TGA. I'll reload the tool, hit open file, and now you can see I've got my targets. So that is the very basic way that you could access this, pretty straightforward. There are a lot of different things that you can do here with this tool in terms of setting up the behaviors. You can use it to get a directory. You can use it to get a single file and you can use it to get a save file name. So if you're trying to save a file, you would use a different option here. And you can go through and kind of take a look at these individual things. Like if you need to, you need to modify the behavior. So also worth mentioning that the static functions here are going to take a list of arguments. If you want to instantiate your own version, your own dialogue, you would do it like this. So you would basically create a, a variable and set it equal to, in our case, it would be qt widgets.q file uh, dialog. And then you can actually go through and set attributes on it however you want. And then rather than calling one of these functions, which is going to throw all of your custom modifications out and just use the default values, you can use the uh, .exec, this guy right here, method, which will generate your dialog. This underscore here, I think, is a holdover from Python 2 where exec was a reserved keyword, so they added this underscore. It's not necessary. In fact, I probably would just get rid of it. So you can just call exec parens, and it'll go ahead and open up your dialog for you. So if we want to get the files that we've selected, let's go ahead and take a look at what the return value looks like. So I'm just, I'm actually going to set this to file names. Oh, and I'll set this to file names. And initially we can just print what we get back from our dialogue. So I'll just select a couple things here. And what it's going to give me is a tuple where the first element is a list of my selection. And then the second element is going to be the filter that was used. 
So all I really care about here is the first element. So I'm going to select the first item there. We can just make a little modification for file name in file names. And then we'll just get again, get that first element. Print file name. Do a reload. And you can see it's printing out all of the files that we have selected. If I wanted to change this to FBX, this is not going to have any impact, but we can make it a little bit clearer to our user. And see the impact of that. So now we're only seeing that FBX. Down here it says geo files, that's populated down here, and then open geo, that data is coming from this label right there. A moment ago I said this doesn't matter. I want to clarify this part here doesn't matter. This part matters a lot. That's going to actually be what determines what shows up in your available files. Okay, so we looked at this documentation here, which by the way is the official PyQt QFile dialog documentation. If you go to, I think this is tutorials point, they've got some additional examples here that can be very, very useful. So if you want to try to try to create some other behaviors, uh, this is a good place to come and do that. You can see they've got some of the uh, options here for for various things: any file, existing file, directory, existing files, whatever. So again, this is this is in the scenario where you probably are not using the static method. This is where you're creating your own QFile dialog instance. All right, so let's say we've got this long list here of our files. Uh, actually, let me set this back to something where there's a few more. So we'll grab our files. What if we wanted to actually present this list of files to our user with the option to remove them or to do something specific with them? To do that, we're gonna to need to create a dedicated sub UI that we will import into our sample tool here for every single file that'll give us some additional controls over the selection. So we'll take a look at that in the next video.